think I'd remember some of this stuff. There it is. And I like the idea that there's hundreds and hundreds of people still flocking in from the rear. Just come on down. And those of you watching on television, uh, we are happy that you're there and we would be happy if you were here. But wherever you are worshiping, just praise the Lord on this Pentecost Sunday and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I do welcome you and hope that uh, you are here to, to just let your spirit out and be incredibly blessed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful time. I don't know of any particular announcements, so I'll ask, uh, does anybody have any announcements that I should have known about? No. So, then, the Evervescent K. Brown. Good morning. Today we, today we receive the Pentecost offering. It's my favorite because it benefits children and youth. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 18b, Jesus said, I am coming to you. He shared these simple but powerful words to assure us that he will always be at our side. This is the hope and inspiration that carries us forward and is fundamental to our faith. Instilling this understanding is a gift we pass to our children. The Pentecost offering helps our youth begin life with a strong start in the years from childhood through young adulthood that will last a lifetime. Read your information included in the worship bulletin. For more understanding, on the back are ways to give, and this is the simplest. This is in your bulletin. Get, you can take care of it right now. Write your check, Venmo. The ways are listed on the back of the bulletin. <clears throat> you can help sustain the important ministries and programs that are supported by the Pentecost offering, and we ask you to give generously. Thank you. An incredible woman who I've just had a chance to know over the last year, Holly. And good morning from the Mission Council. Next Sunday, we will be hosting Church Under the Bridge under the old I-40 overpass on Virginia Avenue. We, so far, we have had 30 members sign up, and I am so excited to see the support and enthusiasm that our church has for this mission effort. If you haven't signed up and you want to sign up, it's not too late. Paula Denner can add you to the list. If you have signed up, please see me after the service in the East Hallway. I need to give you a t-shirt that you will wear next Sunday. And when you come to church here next Sunday, come dressed for the afternoon in, a, in the t-shirt, jeans, and closed-toed shoes. Next Sunday, we will have a hot dog for lunch, and then we will assemble in Watchhorn Hall where, where we will get organized, we will uh, group into carpools, and then we'll have a brief orientation. We will be on site by 2 o'clock. We will be back at the church by 5 o'clock at the latest. <clears throat> and uh, again, on behalf of the Mission Council, I want to thank all of you for supporting this effort. I hope it's going to be really a blessing to us and to the members of Church Under the Bridge. And I hope it's the first of many of our Sundays there. Thank you.
join together in their call to worship. Shall we stand? From the valley of dry bones we cry, come spirit and renew the church. All creation groans for redemption. Come spirit, renew the earth. Let us worship God. Join me in the prayer of the day. Holy One, when Christ ascended into heaven to reign with you in power and glory, you sent the Spirit of truth to guide us into the way, the truth, and the life of Christ. Let your Spirit, our Advocate, guide us still, preserving us from judgment, protecting us from sin, and leading us into righteousness so that we may testify to the good news, fullness of life and joy for all, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion. For the Lord is God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all hope and joy, we confess that we continue to live in fear. You send your word to enliven us, yet we remain dry bones. You send your spirit to empower us, 
yet we fail to dream new dreams. Forgive us, God of grace. Lead us according to your way. Guide us into your truth and deliver us from death to life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that, free, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. <clears throat> Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To this peace we are called as members of a single body. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Okay, young disciples, come on down. slowly but surely coming. We'll start. <laughs> All right, so upstairs today in Sunday school, Miss Catherine was teaching the preschoolers the story of Noah and the ark. And with the older kids, or child, we had one today, we were talking about the armor of God, and today we had the lesson on the shield of faith. And the story we used was Noah's ark, so it worked out perfectly. So let's hear the story of Noah's Ark. You ready, Case? ready? Here we go. So, long, 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 long time ago, um, Noah, uh, God got really kind of annoyed with the way everybody was behaving. Hi, Theo. And um, so he said, you know what, I've had it. I'm just gonna flood the whole earth and kind of start over again. But there was one person that he really kind of liked, and that was Noah. And he said to Noah, Noah, I need you to do something. I need you to build me, to build a boat. 
a really big boat called an ark, really big, and he gave him the dimensions, and this was a really big boat. And I don't know about you, but if I was in Noah's shoes, I might have said something like, what you want me to do? What? Where am I supposed to get the wood? Home Depot isn't even invented yet. But he said, yep, I want you to build a boat. And then I want you to go out and get all two of every animal you can find, a male and a female, a girl and a boy. And you're going to put them all on the boat. I think I would have said, what? You want me to do what? How am I I'm supposed to put a lion with a giraffe and an elephant? How do I keep them from eating each other? What will I feed them? Where will they poop? Where will I poop? Will there be a bathroom? But you know what? Noah didn't say any of those things. I don't think so. I wasn't there. But he didn't say any of those things. He just did it because Noah had a very strong faith, very strong faith. And <clears throat> faith is believing that, when, that God is who he is and that he will do what he says he will do. So Noah, not, with it, with a not even a cloud in sight, built the ark, got the animals, put them on board. It rained, just like God said, for 40 days and 40 nights. The whole earth flooded. They had to wait for the water to kind of recede, to go back down again. And that took a while. They were on that ark for almost half a year until they were finally able to get off the ark and, and get onto land again. And that, at that moment, God put a rainbow in the sky and promised that he would never do that again. All right, can you pray with me? Dear God, my faith may not be as solid as Noah's, but the more I learn about you, the stronger my faith becomes. Now let's say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, let's go upstairs. We have boats to make, not as big as Noah's, though.
Let us pray. Lord God, let the words of your servant's mouth and the meditations of, of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and redeemer, through Christ, amen. The scripture today is from Romans chapter eight. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If we in fact suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and great is our Lord. Amen. Our reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, second chapter, which makes today all that it is. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. That's all the disciples and followers. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. It filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to the Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Uh, but others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. <laughs> that Peter standing with the 11 raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk. In other words, it wasn't five o'clock yet. Okay. These are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoke mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And may God bless to us this reading of his holy word. Amen. Well, with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which have particular uses, all things now became possible to the early church, to you and to me, as long as they occur in the way of the Lord. And the people there and so many other times throughout history, worship would start, come, Lord, fill this place and empower us. Well, May 30 starts the NCAA Women's Softball World Series, and you know where it's played right here in Oklahoma City. The series always reminds me of growing up in Chicago. The sport of the day was softball, slow pitch, fast pitch, it didn't matter. We played with as few as three people and as many as two full teams. We played in the streets, school sandlots, parks, alleys. I remember as a kid, as I watched the older boys and girls, yeah, we girls could play. Some of them were better than the boys and I would wish that I could join them, but I was so young. But that did not stop me from playing with boys and girls of my own age. And that group got older and older. We actually entered into a YMCA contest with all other groups around, mostly church groups. I remember the very first time we were, we were really good. And we were heading towards the finals, and the one game we had to win, we lost by one point. But our team and that other team is going to mature, and they're going to continue to play, and they're going to get better and better 
and they're going to show the entire league. And that's prophecy. Okay. Now, over the years, my interest in the sport increased. I'd studied it, played regularly, thought and dreamed about it. I was driven by the love of the game, which include the friendships made, the ability to compete against oneself as well as another team. It became the core of so many of our, the inner city kids' identity and self-image. And you learn values, obedience. In baseball, there are rules to learn and there's a coach to follow. Faithfulness, regular practice, being on time, conviction, passion for winning, for excellence, yet never demeaning the opponent. Servanthood, being part of a team, giving. And finally, there was prayer, depending on God who was in the stands cheering for both teams. Jesus had told his followers, just before ascending to the Father, he said, wait. Wait for the divine indwelling of the Holy Spirit who would bring you spiritual gifts and teach you spiritual disciplines. Wait for the energy of God to fill you with dreams and visions of how life, marriage, friendships, country, and church can be. Wait for the Spirit to reveal to you the gifts of ministry that you have been given to help fulfill the dreams and visions, not only that you have, but of others that God will put in your path. Hildegard in the 12th century wrote, the Holy Spirit is life that gives life. It is the root to every creature and purifies all things, wiping away sin, anointing wounds. It is radiant life worthy of praise, awakening and enlivening all things. Gregory in the fourth century wrote, all the heavens can fit in the palm of God's hand. And though God is so great, you can completely embrace him. God dwells within you. God pervades your entire being. And finally, Matilda in the 13th century as the source strikes the note, humanity sings. The Holy Spirit is our harpist, and all the strings which are touched in love must sound. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is a compassionate outpouring of the Creator and of the Son. Upon his death, the followers of Jesus, numbering now in hundreds, did not disperse as had been predicted by his betrayers. Rather, they began to gather in homes, kept community, encouraged one another, broke bread and remembered. They prayed and they developed a remarkable trust in one another and in their Lord. It was not new wine that filled them that day. It was not remembering the, the wrongs of the past or the self-wants of the future that motivated them. Our sense of community. And into their hearts came an exploding passion, demonstrating itself in genuine love for one another. It still always has amazed me and it drove people crazy for all the years I was pastor here, that we are hesitant about talking about how we can love one another. Maybe because we grew up with such an image of, of eros, of sexual love, but the love of God, the love of friends, of family is much wider and much to be treasured. They were followers of Jesus they were his disciples and they grasped the singular truth that the purpose of following, of being a disciple is to be in ministry, to go into the world and spread the gospel by demonstrating it. Philippians 4 says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, 
whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, keep doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace, the God of peace will be with you. To be Christian, and what a joy that is. To be Christian is to follow Christ, not believe in Christ as much as to follow him. Our passion is for ministry. As surely as softball was my passion as a child. And we get better at ministry as we practice, as we desire the spirit in our lives, and as we mature in Christ through knowing his word. Ephesians 1, I have heard of your faith. I give thanks to you. Philippians 1, I thank God every time I remember you, and I do. True gratefulness comes when someone realizes that their life has been changed, their wounds healed, because the Spirit working through you brought them God's saving grace and love. In the Spirit, you are empowered to be the presence of Christ in a world that demeans others. The Spirit's outline for the church is rather simple. Example, become an example. Personal invitation, bring others. Continued fellowship, love one another, and have fun together. Finally, we know that the Lord will never ask of us what God cannot achieve through us. Therefore, you have been given gifts, talents, skills for ministry. We have been given the Spirit to motivate and empower us, not to give in to the world or the darkness of it. We have been given the Spirit to confirm within us that no matter how good or how bad it gets, we are God's child and family. We are given the Holy Spirit so that the world might know the good news of Jesus Christ, of marital love, of adult friendships, of teens who seek to encourage rather than to tear down. We have been given the Spirit so that we can become who we know we are within. Amen. Join me in reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
And bow with me in prayer. With many voices, we give you thanks, O God. For by your Spirit, blend our voices into a symphony of praise worthy of your name. You have stretched out the heavens and set the earth on its course. You've raised up the mountains and the valleys you laid low. The trees you caused to rise toward the sun, their branches provide a haven for birds. You bring the rain in its season to water the earth and prepare the fields for the harvest. Silos are filled with the yield 
you occasion. Our tables are spread with your bounty. You place the moon over us by night, the sun above us to warm our day. The tides ebb and flow in response to your bidding. The winds blow as you direct them. For you are God, who is above us, below us, before and behind us, watching over us and caring for us, directing the way we shall go. May we listen, may we respond, and may we share your goodness. And today especially, we give you thanks for the Holy Spirit, for that Spirit who guides us and gives us gifts by which to respond to your will. Some among us utter wisdom and knowledge. We give you thanks for their minds. May they be led to further their thinking that we may become more enlightened with increasing truth. Some in our midst have gifts of healing. We give you thanks for their compassion and patience. In their search to ease the suffering of others, may they help overcome the causes of pain. Some work with their hands or fashion fine art. We give you thanks for their imagination and skill. May their creations be tributes that honor your name and reminders to us that we serve you alone. There are some with good business sense, others with talents they volunteer. We give you thanks for their discipline and service. Help us to learn from them how to use our time wisely to apportion our talents so that others may rejoice. You amaze us, O oh God, with the breath of your love. You continue to fill us with the breath of your spirit and for all your mercies, we give you thanks. Through Christ who has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> has different ways to receive your pledges, tithes, and offerings. If you are worshiping in the sanctuary, drop your offering in the plates by the doors as you exit. If you are worshiping from home, support us through Venmo, F-P-C-O-K-C, or you can mail in your contribution to the church. Thank you for your support of the ministry of First Presbyterian. Now, let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there is your heart also. Let us worship God with our pledges, tithes, and offerings. Thank you.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Amen. forth as God's joyous people and go in peace and let the mountains and hills before you break forth into singing all the trees of the field will clap their hands for truly they are blessed who walk in the way of the Lord and all God's people said amen, amen.